Hey everyone, my name is Vishwas, and today we're going to talk about the React ecosystem in 2023. As we reach the midway point of the year, React continues to be one of the most widely used JavaScript libraries out there and remains a favorite amongst developers. But with so many tools and libraries available within the React ecosystem, it can be quite challenging to choose the right combination for your project. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the most essential libraries that are widely used and trusted by developers in the React community. Hopefully, it should help you make informed decisions on the right tools to use for your next React project. Our first section is on getting started with React. For those who are new to React, getting started can be a daunting task. There are a few different ways to get started, which can be confusing. If you are new to React, or if you just want to play around with it without setting up a project, you can use online sandboxes like Code Sandbox or Stack Blitz. These sandboxes provide a virtual environment where you can write and test your React code without having to install anything on your computer. Online sandboxes aside, a popular choice is Vite, which is a build tool that provides a fast and easy development experience for modern web projects. Weed supports React out of the box, which means that you can quickly set up a React project without having to configure the build process manually. Another popular choice for getting started with React is Next.js. It is a framework built on top of React. Next.js provides a robust set of features, including automatic code splitting, server-side rendering, static-side generation, and more. Next.js is great for building complex applications that require server-side rendering and SEO optimization. Next, let's talk about routing. Routing is an essential part of any modern web application, and there are many excellent routing libraries available to handle complex routing logic and create dynamic single-page applications. One of the most popular routing libraries for React is React Router. React Router provides a simple and declarative way to handle routing in your React application, allowing you to define routes and render different components based on the current URL. An alternative, which is a new kid on the block, is TanStack Router. It is feature-rich and lightweight, but has relatively smaller usage compared to React Router. On the other hand, if you're using Next.js, you don't have to worry about choosing a routing library as Next.js has routing built in. Next, let's talk about client state management. As your application grows, it helps to be more intentional about how your state is organized and how the data flows between your components. A popular state management library for React is Redux Toolkit. It provides a simplified API for defining and updating state, as well as built-in support for features such as immutable updates, serializable action types, and more. SuStand is another state management library for React that provides a simple and lightweight solution for managing state in your application. It provides a built-in mechanism for subscribing to state changes, allowing you to easily keep your UI in sync with your data. It is a great choice for developers who want a lightweight and easy to use state management solution without the overhead of a larger library like Redux. If there is client state, there should be server state. Server state management refers to the management of data that is stored on the server and is accessed remotely by the client application. This data can include user authentication details, database records, and other backend data. To manage server state in React applications, there are several libraries available. The most popular one is TanStack Query, which provides a simple and powerful way to manage server state in React applications. It provides a caching layer that automatically manages the state of your data, fetching and updating it as needed. The library also provides a number of built-in features, such as automatic refetching, polling, and pagination, making it really easy to work with complex data sets. Now, if you're using Redux Toolkit for client state management, Redux Toolkit Query is a great choice for seamlessly managing server state. Apollo Client is another popular library for managing server state in React applications. 
It is particularly well suited for working with GraphQL APIs. For the next section, let's talk about form handling. Handling forms can be a tedious and error prone task, but there are now excellent form handling libraries available for React. Some of the most popular options include Formic and React Hook Form. While Formic provides a simple and intuitive API for managing form state, validating inputs, and submitting the data, this library is not being actively maintained. In 2023, React Hook Form should be your go-to library for form handling. It is lightweight, fast, and easy to use. It also provides a flexible API for building forms and allows you to easily integrate with other libraries such as Yup and Zod for validation. Unlike Formic, React Hook Form does not require a lot of boilerplate code and can significantly reduce the amount of code needed to handle form data. Additionally, React Hook Form has excellent performance as the component does not re-render for every change in the field value. Next up, we have testing. Testing is an essential part of building high-quality React applications. And when it comes to testing React apps, two excellent options to consider are vTest with React Testing Library for unit testing and Playwright for end-to-end -end testing. vTest is a blazing fast unit test framework powered by Vite. In the context of testing React apps, it is a test runner that finds your tests, runs them, determines whether the tests passed or failed, and reports it back in a human-readable manner. React Testing Library is a JavaScript testing utility that provides virtual DOM for testing React components. With the automated tests we write, there is no actual DOM to work with. React Testing Library provides a virtual DOM which we can use to interact with and verify the behavior of a React component. Now, Playwright is an end-to-end -end testing library that provides a reliable and robust way to test your React application's functionality from end-to-end. -end. With Playwright, you can write tests that simulate real-world user interactions with your application, including clicks, keyboard input, and form submissions. Playwright also has excellent documentation and an active community making it a reliable and well-supported option for end-to-end -end testing. Let's move on to the next section, which is styling in React apps. Styling is an essential aspect of building modern web applications, but with so many styling libraries available for React, it can be overwhelming to choose the right one for your project. Let me show you some popular styling libraries that can help you create beautiful and responsive user interfaces. Tailwind CSS is a utility-first CSS framework that provides a set of predefined classes for building UI components. With Tailwind CSS, you can quickly create complex layouts and custom styles without writing CSS from scratch. It has excellent documentation and a really active community, making it a top choice for developers looking to create modern, responsive UIs. Next, we have Styled Components, which is a popular library for styling React components using CSS in JS. It allows you to write CSS directly in your JavaScript code, making it easy to create dynamic styles that are scoped to individual components. Style Components also has excellent support for theming, allowing you to easily switch between different styles for your application. On a similar note, we have Emotion, which is another CSS in JS library that provides a powerful API for styling React components. It is highly performant and allows you to define styles using a wide range of syntaxes, including CSS, SAS, and less. Emotion also has great support for server-side rendering, making it a great choice for universal React applications. After styling, the next logical section is UI component libraries. Component libraries can be a huge time saver for React developers, and there are now many excellent options available. Some of the most popular options include Material UI, Mantine UI, and Design, and Chakra UI. There are also Tailwind CSS frameworks such as Headless UI, Daisy UI, and ShadCN. I am currently learning Tailwind CSS, 
and a huge fan of Shadzian. Next up, we have animation, which can be a powerful tool for creating engaging and interactive UIs. There are, again, excellent animation libraries available for React. Some of the most popular options include React Spring and Framer Motion. These libraries make it easy to create smooth and responsive animations with minimal code. Next section, let's talk about data visualization. DataViz is an important part of many React applications, especially those that rely on complex data sets. Some popular DataViz libraries for React include Victory, React Chart.js 2, and Recharts. Recharts is probably the safest bet when starting with data visualization in React apps. All right, let's talk about tables. Table can be a challenging component to implement in React, and in the React community, TanStack Table is the clear winner. The library makes it easy to create powerful and customizable tables with features like sorting, filtering, pagination, and a lot more. Next section, let's discuss internationalization. I18N is an important consideration for many applications, especially those with a global audience. Libraries like React I18 Next and Format.js help translate your application into multiple languages and handle localization. Next, let's talk about one of my favorite sections, DevTools. Development tools can be a huge help for developers, and there are quite a few that I use regularly. We have React Developer Tools, Redux DevTools, React Testing Library DevTools, React Hook Form DevTools, and finally, TanStack Query DevTools. They all are just a joy to work with, and I highly recommend using them. For creating documentation apps with React, a really good choice is Docusaurus. Of course, you can also use Next.js with a framework like Nextra. For component development environment and creating design systems, make sure to take a look at Storybook. Type checking can help catch bugs and improve the reliability of your React applications. TypeScript is what you will need. Next, when it comes to mobile applications, React Native has become an increasingly popular option for building native mobile applications with React. Now, I have seen a few, but haven't received enough requests for React Native, so please let me know in the comment section if a series on React Native is something you're looking forward to. In addition to these libraries and tools, there are many other awesome libraries available for React developers. Some popular options include DND Kit for drag and drop functionality, React Drop Zone for file uploads, and Firebase or Superbase for authentication. These libraries can help streamline development and improve the user experience of your React application. With that, we come to the end of this video. I would really like to hear your thoughts so please leave a comment with the libraries you regularly use from the React ecosystem. Also, let me know what other packages I should be taking a look at, which I have missed in this video.